Top new friendos, welcome back to the Tropical Garage. My name's Troy, and today we have another in depth episode. This one is going to be on my Ufaga Histrionica Tato. Starting out with the enclosure, I made this one myself, and it's the Euro style front slider type, and it measures 44 by 17 by 24 inches. The Vivarium was actually featured in the How to Build Your Background Like a Pro video and also shortly one after it that I showed how I planted it in early 2020. Inside the tank, the background consists of Great Stuff expanding foam, which was then shaved down with a drill and wire wheel brush, and then covered in Gorilla Glue and Hygrolon. That's spelled H-Y-G-R-O-L-O-N. For everybody in the comments that's constantly asking me what it is that I'm actually saying in the video. And the wood that I used in this is actually Malaysian driftwood. This is actually the first vivarium I created in which I used the sponge mat as the drainage layer and substrate layer, and just topped it off with various types of tropical moss and liverworts, leaf litter, monkey pods, and other twigs and natural accents. That's right everyone, this vivarium has zero substrate. However, I do have a few small cups of the calcium clay amongst the ground area, so I guess you could consider that a substrate. I'm not going to talk about every single plant in this vivarium, but I will talk about some of them, bromeliads being one of them. Bromeliads are pivotal with the success of keeping and breeding Ufaga histrionica, and the bromeliad I used in this tank is Neoregilia compacta. These are a great option because they don't have the spiky edges that most Neoregilia have, and histrionica are prone to scratching themselves on the spikes, which then could lead to infection. They also have some really great sized pools for the slightly larger tadpoles than some of the other small obligate species. There's also some nice medium sized aeroids in this tank, which are Philodendron varicosum, Philodendron Lincoln Park Zoo, and Therium clarinarvium. Other than that, there are several different Margravias, Microgrammas, Epiphytic ferns, and Peperomias that mainly shingle and vine throughout the hardscape. Ufaga histrionica tato come from the western rainforest of Colombia. There's actually a few different site-specific locales of tato, but mine were imported from Tesoros de Colombia with the title tato. Tato are one of the most unique looking histrionica in my opinion. The grayish, brownish, silverish metallic background with blotches and spots of orange, red, and almost dirty looking mustard color markings really make for quite a special looking frog. They're also one of those frogs you never really realize how beautiful they are until you actually see them in person. They're bold, they're a fairly large locale of histrionica, which for me is always a plus since I'm a big fan of the larger dart frogs always being on display. Tato, like most histrionica, are not sexually dimorphic simply from a visual standpoint. Males and females are basically the same size. Sometimes males are slightly bigger than females, and other times, females are slightly larger than males. It really just comes down to the individual frog. The best way to determine a male Tato is to witness it visually and audibly calling. And females, well, they lay eggs. There may be some other ways that keepers and breeders use to determine the sex, but personally, this is the only way that I will determine whether one is a male or female. For food, I primarily feed these guys dusted Heidi Eye fruit flies. However, there are several different types of springtails, isopods, mites, and other types of microfauna in the tank that I'm sure are also on their menu. I dust their food with some sort of calcium or carotenoid supplement four to five times a week. And lately, I've been doing vitamin A once a week. As far as the requirements for their temperature and humidity go, I keep them the same as all my other dart frogs in the garage, which I try to aim for the mid 70s on temp and 70 to 80% humidity. 
I use LED shop lights with 6000K color temp, and I do also run Arcadia 12% UVB bulbs through the screen for about two hours a day. I miss the tanks eight times per 24 hours for 15 to 30 seconds. I know that may sound like a lot to some of you, but all my vivariums are drilled for drainage and the Euro style tanks ventilation system works really well. Not everyone's misting cycles should be the same. Things like the type of enclosure, type of ventilation, ambient room temperature and ambient room humidity will definitely be contributors when you're trying to get dialed in. If you plan on keeping and breeding histrionic katado, it's best that they be kept in pairs. Keeping multiple males or multiple females can result in same-sex frogs stressing each other out, which makes them vulnerable to infections that can ultimately lead to death. As I stated earlier, I keep mine in a 44 inch by 17 inch by 24 inch tall vivarium. And this is my favorite size for histrionica, but you can obviously keep them in a larger tank if you wanted to. And also you can keep them in a smaller vivarium. The smallest I'd recommend would be around 20 inches wide by 20 inches deep by 24 inches tall. The word ufaga translates to egg eater which means that these tadpoles will not develop into frogs unless they are fed infertile or trophic eggs that are laid by the mother. For breeding, I use several types of egg deposition sites. I use these little cups that are about double the size of a film canister that I call histrionic cups, and I also use a really cool and neat product called tadpoles. I like to use both of these and place them throughout the tank in different heights and angles to give them as many options as possible to find a suitable site. And the frogs do begin showing signs of the typical Ufaga courtship, which usually looks like the male calling nonstop, following and stalking the female until they found a suitable deposition site. After they found a site to lay the eggs, the frogs will be in and out of there throughout the day, and the female will usually deposit on average about seven eggs and then the male fertilizes the eggs. After the eggs have hatched into tadpoles, which usually takes anywhere from 12 to 15 days, the female is usually the one to transport the tadpole to the bromeliad axle. The tadpole swims up the back of the female and uses its mouth parts to stick to the frog while being transported. They normally only transport about three to eight tadpoles, and often during the tadpole stage, some tadpoles are abandoned for whatever reason, and usually those tadpoles do not develop any further, or if they do, they oftentimes have deformities. The female will continue to visit the bromeliad axle every week to check on her tads. The tadpoles will vibrate when they are hungry, letting the mother know to drop off some eggs. She'll continue feeding the tads for about two to three months, or until the tadpole has eaten around 75 eggs. Congratulations, you now have some baby Tato histrionica. Sometimes you'll see them fresh out of the water, just peeking out of the bromeliad axle. And other times you just one day see the little surprises amongst the leaf litter already a couple weeks out of the water. Baby Tato histrionica are very adorable and they're quite variable as far as the color and pattern are concerned, which always makes it fun and exciting to see how the babies turn out. It's a good idea to have plenty of springtails on hand for when they first come out of the water but they do grow relatively quickly, and they're normally taking dusted fruit flies within a couple weeks. Oftentimes when I know that I have fresh baby histrionica out of the water in a certain tank, I'll leave a couple banana chunks in the tank for the flies to congregate on, and they also lay eggs there. The fruit fly larva can be quite nutritious for young baby histrionica. I personally like to raise baby Toto inside of the parent's tank. They seem to grow bigger, faster, and stronger compared to when I tried to raise them in separate enclosures. I like to raise them in the parent's tank for about four to six months, usually before listing them for sale. That's usually enough time to ensure that the, the frog looks very healthy and it doesn't have any developmental issues. Usually by that time, the cycle has already repeated itself and you've also got the next round of fresh froglets in the tank as well. All right, Ufrandos, that's going to wrap up this in-depth episode on the amazing Ufaga Histrionica Tato. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoy these frogs. We'll see you on the next one, whenever that may be. Goldberg, out.